So we're five past. So I will just wait one more minute and then we can get underway. Martin, are you with us in the room? I presume that's, yeah, I can see some thumbs. Oh, yes, here he is. Can you hear us? Got you. Uh, well, we, we can, we only see some shadows there. Do you have a light you can turn on? <laughs> oh, we should just oh, turn no. around then because yeah. we're just against the light. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. um, we're going to just turn around. Wait. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. There are people more technical than myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Gilly. How are you? Bloody freezing. Oh, it's beautiful here. Well, it's beautiful here. We've actually had three days of dry. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but Sydney's or oh, the east coast of Australia has been undergoing its third La Nina in a row. So we've had years and years worth of rain. And we've heard the news even in Canada about Sydney flooding, so we feel for you. Well, it's not flooding, but yeah. You should in other parts of, of Australia, it's flooding. <laughs> so now I think you can see us a bit better. Can everybody see us now? Oh, much better. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Very okay. nice. Thanks. So a very warm welcome to everybody. As you can see, there's a few of us lovely people right here in Nimegen at um, attending the this year's Euro Games. And so far, a great start and um, everything going well. And we are looking very much looking forward to a spectacular AGM. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Well, everyone seems very well behaved, but uh, could I ask everyone who, if they're not talking to put themselves on to mute? Otherwise, I'll have to use the mute all button. <laughs> so thank you very much for uh, for not having too many speakers and everything on at the moment. I'll just, uh, if everyone's okay, we'll get started. Is that all right? We're all okay in the room. We've got about 38 people on at the moment. Um, we did have, uh, around about 60 registrations. And of that, 41 are supposed to be online. And I think we've got at least 10 or 20 late ones that haven't registered for the Zoom call. So um, I've sent out a couple of reminders with the link in it. So hopefully they'll join soon or maybe they're just not coming. So um, if anybody hears of anybody who's got a problem, uh, you can post it in the chat and we can see if we can get them in. Juan Bigot told me that he's got trouble logging in. Did he get this follow-up link to register? Buddy? I'm asking him right now. All right. <laughs> Okay, so well. Chris, just just to note on that, there's a, according to my list, there's 31 clubs represented on the registration. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I have a list here of the people who haven't turned up yet. Where are you, Randy? I'm uh, at home, uh, and that picture is uh, uh, downtown Kansas City. Impressive. <laughs> Not as impressive as my house. <laughs> That's all, oh, wow. <laughs> we all know that Brad Maiasato is the richest person here. I don't think so, Wayne. Well, I saw you adopting all those French and Spanish <laughs> people. 
sorry, I don't know that, but I do have a Siri. <laughs> Somebody's Siri has just gone off. It's my Alexa. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so these guys have not registered. These people have not registered in Zoom yet. And <laughs> Wayne, can you shut her up? <laughs> um, and so of them, these are the voting, the people who have said they're voting who haven't registered yet. <sighs> so does anybody see any names there that they can contact? Anyway, I'll just leave it up there for a minute. We go back. First up, do we have a quorum? Is everybody happy that there is enough people here to hold a meeting? Quorum consists of the clubs that are present. So we're all set. All righty. AGM 2021 minutes. I had them there a second ago. Apparently not, just a minute. They were in the pack that was on the website. Right, so I'll just go to that. Yeah, so if you um, follow the documents link on the web AGM website, you'll, you'll see the minutes and the treasure reports and other reports there. Yep, here we are. Hmm. There we go. So here's last year's minutes. I'm happy to move that they be accepted. Yep. Any objection? I'll second. I'll second. Thanks, Alden. So there being no objection, we'll move on. So welcome everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for making the time to get here and, oh, here we go, another one. Yeah. Get here and to go to uh, Neiman. How do you say that again, Martin? Neimigan. Neimigan. Yes. yes. Neimigan. So Neimigan. 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 It's Neimigan. 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 So thank you all for uh, turning up in Neimigan as well. And I hope you have a wonderful Euro Games over there. Uh, we'll have a presentation from them in a second. Uh, actually, we'll have a presentation from Naim again right now. So are you prepared to speak to the presentation that I have here? Sorry? Uh, <laughs> I've, got, I've actually got a pack from, from Martin mm -hmm. for Naim again. Naim again. So does somebody there want to talk to it? Um, if, I, if I do the slides or do you want to share a screen or does the person who put this together not there? If you can share the, share the slides, then I can talk through the presentation, but the person that actually put it together is not present at the meeting, so. Okay, but well, let's just, oh, not this again. Uh, now I've got to share a different screen. Chris, is it possible to read out which clubs are online? Which, who's online, you mean? Yeah, which clubs? Uh, well, you can see who's online in the participants window over on the side there. But you need all to... Put, we... We could all put our, our club names in the chat room if you just want to record it. All right. And maybe we should all, because we're three clubs here. Yeah. We should add those two. 
Yeah. Yep, that'd be a good idea. Um, just a second. Yeah. All right, I'm going to I'm going to get out of this view and just go back to the one that I know how to do. Edinburgh, uh, and Stockholm. Stockholm. Perfect. Can you see that okay? Um, nope, not yet. No. How about now? Now it's coming. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, perfect. Yeah. perfect. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll just talk you through it. So, um, this was sent to us by the organizers of Eurogames 2022. Um, it's an event happening in Nijmegen in um, Netherlands. So these are the Eurogames 2022. And um, what they, they have basically prepared a presentation for us explaining everything that's happening at the event from, from, the, from sports registration, what, what what they offer in terms of accessibility, accommodation, what sort of cultural program they've got accompanying it, and any of the media and contacts, should anyone like to make any inquiries to Eurogames. So um, if you just wanna move to the next slide, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so in terms of sports, so Eurogames 2022 offers 19 fantastic sports. This include tackle and field, running, golf, swimming, water polo, rowing, field hockey, football, rugby, pentaki, badminton, squash, volleyball, tennis, ballroom dancing, bridge, table tennis, and martial arts. Um, moving on. So Euro Games 2022, as mentioned, can, um, they basically contain 19 sports. They are spread across the four days of the event, which is from the 27th, which runs from 27th of July to, which is a Wednesday to Saturday 30th of July. And they've included a lovely timetable for anyone at the event that wishes to partake or um, get involved or just spectate any of the sports. So <coughs> more to say about that. So moving on. So, as you can see, it's a very well organized event. Um, as every year, they try to have a very well organized, what they would like to call the village area, where <coughs> all the main activities and the accompanied cultural program um, takes place. So where the little hut says home, that's where the village of the festival is. And all around it, you can see some of the fantastic facilities they have in the city where some of the sports they offer at the event are taking place. Moving on. So one of the, one of the spectacular events that the organizers have been promoting for this particular city is rowing on the river. It's a fantastic event on the river running just south of the city. And yeah, um, I think that's it. And then they also offer, they also offer spectacular, some spectacular um, ballroom dancing and bridge classes, which are actually going on um, throughout the entire event. I believe there's actually one on scheduled for later today and <coughs> all the participants of Eurogames are welcome to just drop in and attend should they wish to do so. Um, and then in terms of registration, so this just shows us the registration numbers and overview. So total number of registrations for this year's event, quite high, 735. And most popular sports, quite surprisingly not running, but badminton, tennis, swimming, and volleyball. Perfect. And the, some of the benefits each year for either participating or volunteering that the Eurogames offer each year. You can get discounts on parties, 
free entrances to various museums and cultural institutions in the city where Euro games are taking place. You usually get free entrances to museums. As you can see, there's some mentioned right there. And you can get, you can also get multi-day discounted tickets on travel throughout the city. Okay, moving on. And in terms of this just explains for anyone traveling to the event, how to reach it, it's fairly accessible. Most of us had no problem reaching the city. It's an hour from the, from the capital, from Amsterdam. So yeah, fantastic, good connections. Um, yeah. Okay. Is Amsterdam and, the capital? Uh, sorry? Is Amsterdam yeah. the capital? Yes, Amsterdam, the capital of- uh, um, Not Den Haag. No. No, that's just where the government is. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's very confusing. Den Haag is the capital, not Amsterdam. That's what I thought so. <laughs> no, 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 no. Amsterdam, Amsterdam is the capital, and, and Den Haag is where the government is located. They're not located in the, in the capital. Mm. Yes. I, I'm originally from the Netherlands, so that's why I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just live in Copenhagen. In trivia nights, it's Den Haag. <laughs> well, you're not so, going to win this one, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, we just explained some of the fantastic things they offer in terms of accommodation for the participants of the games. Um, and moving on. Oh. Um, there we go. So this explains some of the cultural programs. So one of the fantastic things about Euro games each year is that they offer so much more than just sports. They have fantastic opening and closing ceremonies, but also host various events in between, such as film screenings, dance dances, various various parties where participants can socialize. They also include various guided tours of the of the city where the event is taking place they take various uh, sometimes they also include guided tours of some exhibitions within the city so yeah every year Eurogames 2022 primarily about um, sport within the LGBT community but also so much more than just sport okay moving on and so as mentioned, there was the village, that's where the main um, events are taking place. Um, the village this year offers, offers participants and volunteers a chance to, well, um, it's basically the place where participants and volunteers can get access all the amenities such as food, drinks, exhibitions, attend panels, discussions, and it's where the main stage is where have all the opening and closing ceremonies are take to take place. Okay, and moving on. <coughs> and this just tells you um, how to get there and spread the information should you wish to join any of the events. Okay, moving on. And these are some of the contact details should people wish to get in touch um, in regards to anything take that's happening at Eurogames. Okay. And any further questions? No, I don't think there are. So that concludes the presentation. And just as an additional bit of information for anyone not aware, Eurogames are taking place in a different European city each year. The next year's games are taking place in Bern in Switzerland. So that's are going, those are going to be the Euro Games 2023. And we would like to ex already extend a warm welcome and invitation for any of you that might wish or have the time to attend. We like to let you know early to make arrangements for that. Thank you. Thanks very much, Martin. And thanks uh, for arranging the room over there and for traveling to the games and for all the participants that are in the room. So thank you very much for, uh, for joining in in person. Normally these events are in person with people like Wayne and me on a telephone line at home. Um, but uh, now with Zoom, of course, it's a vastly expanded audience. So we're grateful for all the online participants as well.
to the agenda. So President's report, um, I have put that into the newsletter. I'm sure everybody's dying to read it. But basically, I'm just saying that uh, I think everybody's had a very trying couple of years with COVID and all the lockdowns worldwide. And it's great that we're able to join our friends out uh, running together again, finally, and sometimes um, getting together with friends that we've made over Zoom and Strava and Facebook and TikTok and everything that we've been doing while we've been locked down. Um, so I hope that everybody's gain some benefit from this terrible last couple of years but um i, I think we've we've had a, an amazing response to uh to our online campaigns so i think we've got a couple of thousand members on facebook and strava uh, so obviously people are very engaged with that and hopefully this engagement will continue so um yeah and i'd also like to uh, pay special thanks to the retiring members this year uh, particularly Wayne and Zander, uh, sorry, sorry, Wayne's not going, uh, Richard and Xander, <laughs> who've put in so much work over uh, so long. Um, I think, I, I'm not sure, Xander did register, but I don't think he's online. Um, so I'd just like to say for the record that they're fantastic contributors to the organisation over the last several years. And... Um, uh, we wouldn't be where we are now without them. So uh, it'll be uh, a, a big loss. Mm. And also, um, unfortunately, Sam Sanders um, and Emma Bug have retired as well this year. So we'll get to their positions in a little while. But uh, we've got a couple of vacancies on committee as well. So that's my report. Then next up is... Secretary's report, Alain, did you want to say anything? Not really. I'm just, I'm the one who works it behind the scene or behind the curtain, as we say. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> any little issues or problems, they go through me and I send it to the president to solve afterwards. <laughs> but no, no, uh, no it, it's fine. Secretary is also just a thankless job. So thank you very much for uh, looking after the, or the minutes and the meetings and all of the other uh, annoying administrative administrivia that goes along with uh, running a club. So thank you very much. No worries. Um, so moving on, we've got Alden doing his treasurer's report. Alden, would you like to speak to, how would you like to go? Last year's financials uh, first? Actually, let me just start out with a little bit of an overview of the right. club membership and the renewal update, just to give out some uh, information. So for uh, 2022, we currently have 105 active clubs and there's four clubs with pending memberships. Just to note, there are 10 clubs that were members in 2021 that have not renewed, but uh, uh, we, hope, we hope we'll see some of them down the road. Uh, looking, at the, looking at the numbers, we have over uh, 8,700 members in our clubs across the world. Some of, a few of those may be duplicates. I know there are a few people that are members of multiple clubs, but it's a pretty, pretty wide membership. So that's, that's good news. That's an increase from previous years. We also have seen an increase in the number of, of clubs paying membership fees. So we have uh, 55 clubs in the over 250 member range, seven clubs in the 151 to 250 range, 25 clubs in the 51 to 150 uh, range, 13 clubs in the 26 to 50 number of members range. And then there are remaining 60 clubs with 25 or less, but it's an overall increase in our membership and the number of clubs uh, paying fees. So we're doing well, looks like a healthy organization to me. So- Great. Uh, oh, um, just yeah. a question. So I think you might've covered yeah. this, but I just see in the chat here, what's the total number of clubs worldwide? So that's 100, 105 active clubs. 105. And Gilbert just said that New York has got a thousand members today. So. Ah, so that's an increase in what you have on our website. Yep. Very good. Oh, more fees. We might need a new <laughs> tier, a new membership <laughs> tier. We can, we can call it the New York tier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I'll, I'll move on. Um, uh, hopefully uh, the, the treasurer's documents are posted on the 
AJM site, and if people have seen them there, but I'll give a quick overview of the documents just going forward. First of all, um, just the, the annual uh, 2021 final report um, that was now that the year was completed. Uh, I'll just give a quick overview of the numbers. We had started the year with uh, $16,692.25 as a balance. We had um, membership fee income of 2,650 and we received $20,000 in the Brooks grants. Uh, and our expenses, we had uh, bank fees, $101.99. Uh, our Federation of Gay Games membership fees, $100. We had our Federation of Gay Games delegates reimbursement for $1,000. And we had spent uh, 600 of our club promotion money that we had budgeted. Uh, those are the only expenses. Uh, we had put out the donations of... Um, <laughs> To the, to the Brooks uh, grants. We had, during the 2021, we made uh, donations of $10,750 and that left uh, $9,250 yet to be distributed, which happened to be distributed just over the year's end in January. But it left us with a uh, closing balance of $26,790.26. So that was the 2021 uh, treasurer's report. Um, moving forward, unless there's any questions, we can hold, hold the questions to the end, perhaps. Um, just wanted to give a, uh, the year to date 2022 treasurer's report. Oh, sorry. so with our starting balance, the one we left up, up <laughs> left up with at the end of 2021, 26,790 and 26 cents. We had uh, membership fees to date, $3,100. We've had donations to the organization of $25, and we received uh, $23,002 in uh, donation from Brooks to enable our grant program. Our, as far as our overhead expenses, bank fees $173.12, Federation of Gay Games fees $100. We have not done any delegate reimbursement yet, nor club promotions. We've had uh, posters and supplies of $14.20. Um, <clears throat> we've had expenses connected to the AGM, $265.90, and the IFR social that we plan uh, for the current Euro Games, $500. And with the, um, uh, we have made IFR book grants of $31,502, which gave our total expenses of $32,555.22 leaving us with a balance of $20,362.04 um, $20, um, currently. So of that, just a quick note, we have, we have um, uh, $1,277.21 in our PayPal account and $19,084.83 in our bank account for the total of $23,6204. So, uh, and I so just, that's the... just like to say too that it's um, a lot of money that comes in from Brooks, and it's also a lot of work for people like Alden and Richard in the past to administer all of those grants and evaluate all the applications. And so, thank you everybody who's done so much work on um, on a, evaluating all the grants for the Brooks uh, money, because it is a it is a once again something that happens behind the scenes, but it's a lot of hours that are spent doing that. Yeah, I was, and I was going to give a little more information on the book, Brooks Grants when that topic came up on the agenda, just with number of clubs and so forth. So we'll look at that down the road. Okay. So at this point, Chris, did you want to go over the proposed budget that I put out there for 2023? Yeah, is there, is there any questions about what's gone before? No? How much we spend on stamps? No? Everybody's happy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was, that was mostly mailing out the uh, Brooks grants. <laughs> I okay, still have so. some stamps. I still have some stamps left. <laughs> okay. Um, so if, if people have pulled up the, the document for the, the budget, but I can oh. go over the. Sorry, I'll start sharing again. Okay. If you, if you want, I can either go over it, but. Yep. Okay. So what I've, what I've proposed, I put it up next to the year-to-date 2022 uh, 
charge of this report figures because that gives us a good idea of, of where we stand. Uh, looking, looking ahead, I budgeted uh, $2,800 in membership fees and then uh, bank fees budgeted $180, our website $192, membership fees for the Federation of Gay Games $100. Um, I'm proposing an increasing the delegate reimbursement to 1,500. We have the standing one-time club promotion budget item of $4,000 that represents $500 per region for the regions that have not yet um, had any, any promotion events and then $28 in postage and supplies. So mm -hmm. the overhead expenses uh, totaling 6,000 Looking ahead at events, um, $300 for the AGM expenses, just the meeting expenses. And I put in $1,000 for the IFR social events, um, basically doubling that because we have two events coming up in 2023 with, with the gay games taking place in Hong Kong and Guadalajara. So we can talk about that if there's you know, any issues or what we might wanna do about that. And um, then I put in a contingency of $1,000 in our budget just for uh, some leeway for the steering committee uh, uh, to deal with things that may come up over the course of the year. So such that I propose our total expenses of $8,300, uh, leaving us with a, a IFR balance of $14,112.04. And presumably we will get a, a Brooks grant this next year. They talked about doing that. We're gonna be looking at that going forward, but uh, we would plan that that would net out to zero as far as any, any Brooks money uh, by the end of the year. So just a, just a few notes. So what I was looking at with the, uh, the projected income, I basically have projected a zero balance, uh, zero increase or expense to, the, to our existing balance. We have the, um, the expenses match our income um, separate from the one-time expenses of the uh, contingency fee, the club promotion and the extra $500 for the second uh, IFR social event. So otherwise we balance our income to expenses. So keeping on uh, an even keel with my proposal. <laughs> so uh, let me know if there's any, any questions on that or concerns as far as um, you know, discussion on the uh, IFR social, I guess I, uh, or the uh, ex expanding the uh, reimbursement for our, our delegates. I guess uh, one, just one quick note on those uh, IFR social events. I guess I'm recommending those provided that we do have a organization um, in, the, in the locations that can organize the event in enough in advance that we can publicize it, that we get um, you know, IFR promotion uh, through, the, through the event. So that was, that's my view of uh, putting that in there in the budget. So back to you, Chris, if there's any questions or you want to moderate <laughs> any issues. I don't see anything in the chat. Does anybody have any uh, questions? <clears throat> oh, go Just, ahead, Jim. Um, uh, Alden, the, uh, the games LBD run, um, we're looking at doing something at both gay games. It's very confusing at both gay games. Um, but we're looking to do something that will be extremely cheap. <laughs> okay. Because we uh, like well, I... cheap. Um, um, we're talking <laughs> to, at the moment, we're talking about um, um, a relay where you get dressed in the opposite, of, uh, opposite gender's clothes. Well, <laughs> let's worry or about it when you've got, a, when you've got a proposal. Or, 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 or a handbag throw. Um, okay. which will be cheap and easy to run. Yes. So okay. when you've got a proposal, well, Wayne will handle that next year, I guess. Well, do you think he needs to budget for it now? And if so, how no, much? No, no, no. no it'll, yeah. it'll be small. Okay. Because yeah. okay, I do have a line item there for it, the games, games run, but uh, yeah, I hadn't had any information on that. Yep. So thanks. Yep. So Jim, you had a question? Yeah, just, just briefly. I mean, we're holding, it seems like our, not counting donations, revenues, two, three thousand dollars, and year over year for the last few years, you're holding nearly twenty thousand dollars, which is fine. I'm just wondering, is there is there a target that you guys are managing to, or you, you want to make sure you have X number of years of revenue 
in reserves or uh, or maybe should we use this money before it's inflated away? <laughs> um, so just on that, yeah, we had, we had sort of been maintaining our balance and it has been growing over the years. That's true. And that was part of the idea behind the one-time expenditures for club promotion that we decided to spend some of our surplus uh, on that, which is why we had, had those items in there. Um, so I suppose the group as a whole could entertain additional things in, in that in that vein, but uh, but that has been the the well, you know what, the way we've been operating. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Uh, so what was it? To, to that to that point, I just want to remind folks too that um, with Xander being a representative uh, for the games, uh, he did not <laughs> take a lot of travel expenses because of his profession that were that were paid for. So we we saved a lot of money in that respect. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh. Yeah, we've been we've been lucky. And previous to Xander, we had a uh, uh, previous delegate that was a airline employee. So we we blocked out on that. <laughs> um, Alden, is there any way we can invest that some money to get some interest? We, we can look into that. Um, now that interest rates are going up a little bit, it might be worthwhile since they've been low, but things, things such as uh, um, CDs would, would give us a little more than what we're getting. Uh, some of that, we can look into that. It, it just seems like, you know, you, you do sort of a strategic review and say, what if anything differently would we want to do? And then use those funds as you as you describe. You've got promotion in there, which is great because that's going to help grow the club. But you could, with a balance like that, you could say, well, what if anything would we do different with the club? Would we get more engaged in certain causes or something? But that would be tied back to sort of a, you know, different, maybe a more strategic view of what if anything. And I'm not suggesting anything different, but what if anything different would the club do? And then that would be a perfect use of funds. Am I right yeah. in saying, Alden, that some of that money was from Brooks the year before? Um, well, that's why I separate out. You'll see I have the IFR balance. Yeah. And so it, that that would reflect the money that's not belonging to Brooks. That's why yeah. the, in this year's I've separated out the Brooks rather than having uh, commingling since it's an ongoing thing so i thought brooks a couple of years ago gave us five thousand dollars or something they it, previous to the, to the uh, two years where they gave us grants they put out five thousand dollars to individual clubs that yeah. oh. applied to them directly and then the last two years they've been giving money to ifr and then we have used that money to put out with grants okay. and at this point the ifr balance is um i mean the brooks balance on the brooks side is 750 dollars, and that was the remainder of the um the 2021 grant yeah so um yeah otherwise that's that's it there's no other brooks money at this time it's all been awarded out so from 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 the point of view of the steering committee and the uh, as a whole i think what ha had been we had been looking for is proposals from the various regions for the for the promotions and that could come through individual clubs as well and and work with the regions but it's that kind of thing we were looking for there wasn't uh, we didn't have a a, a committee or, or a process that was driving that down to the regions could we for example, World Pride in Sydney next few months away, uh, could we have an Australian Pacific event then? Potentially, sure. Okay. So I think if you if we look for proposals, something to, to do that per, to promote IFR and, and the region and uh, gaining more clubs. I think we'd need to take that to a steering committee meeting after this sure, because we sure. need to get through these. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. need to get through the formal um, AGM. Uh, so that sounds like something we can get in our next steering committee meeting, Wayne. So, are there any other questions for Alden about? Because we're going to come up against the Brooks grant information later on, so we'll revisit this. But is any other questions about the finances? All good. Okay. So next is our. Communications team. Perfect. Woody and Martin. Uh, Martin, do you want to? Martin's report is in the newsletter as well. Do you want to speak to the?
communications um, I, role? I've, I've actually um, wrote a separate report just for this, but oh. um, if it's okay with um, Buddy, um, I was gonna primarily focus on talking about the social media side of communications and then Budi can talk a little bit more about the newsletter because I think it's fair to say that he's been a little bit more involved in uh, getting that published. So if that's all right with Budi. Okay, so the report I have prepared. So I think it's fair to say that this year has been extremely important for the communications team within IFR. And um, as we try to tackle um, and increase the establishment of international front runners brand identity. And we try to increase our visibility within the community we represent, especially within regards to specific communication activities, particularly our presence on social media. I think it's fair to say, looking at the statistics and the numbers in the previous year, our social media presence has been has been significantly lower than this year. And there have been certain social media platforms where we weren't actually present. Um, however, we've managed to successfully turn that around and we've established and maintained our visibility on all key social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and most recently revived our Strava account. So in addition to the private Facebook group, which just to give you some stats, has over 1.1K followers, we've also now created the International Front Runners Facebook page. So if anyone is not yet following the page, the page currently has nearly 300 likes. So if you're not yet following our page, then do give us a like on Facebook. Um, we've, also, um, we've also created, as mentioned, International Front Runners Facebook page, and that played a crucial role in reaching our wider um, audience and more members, as well as increasing the follower ratio within our community. And I think um, beforehand in the previous years, that sort of felt a little bit left out uh, of some of the members that we have. I think it would be fair to say that they felt a little bit left out and unable to keep up with some of the things that were happening within the organization, particularly as most of the things were primarily just posted in the Facebook group. So it felt that if people were reluctant or weren't able to use space or uh, join the Facebook group, they weren't able to keep up with what was going on with international front runners. But we've, um, we've managed to turn that around, which I think is fantastic. I think we've also managed to streamline the process of how we post content and communicate with our members, particularly on Facebook and Instagram. We've made it a lot easier for members and clubs to keep up with any information we post um, using their preferred social media that's relevant to them and their clubs. So like I said, we try to be as active as possible on all social medias, including <clears throat> Twitter, just to make sure that certain clubs, especially smaller ones that don't necessarily have websites or maybe are only visible on platforms like Twitter or Instagram, uh, feel equally represented and are able to keep in touch with what has been happening. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job at keeping all the members within the organization up to date with all the relevant world LGBTQIA plus dates, any ceremonies and celebrations. We've posted all that. We've tried to commemorate every, every LGBTQIA or running um, event or ceremony that is relevant to the community we represent. I think we've done pretty well with that. And I think to try best connect with the clubs and the community we serve, we try to really encourage all the clubs within our network to really engage and interact with us all year round in encouraging them to actually get in touch, um, to tag us on social media, 
to tag us in posts, to let us know if they've got any achievements that they might want to be further put forward and highlighted by international front runners. So what we've tried doing is if a club had a particular achievement that we've spotted as communications team on their social media, we would repost, reshare, particularly on our Instagram and therefore put the club, um, making sure that we put our individual clubs at the forefront and sort of highlight anything that matters and is relevant to them. I think we have also been fairly successful at um, being able to celebrate and highlight the formation of any new clubs with special welcome posts on our social media. And this also gave our more long-standing club the opportunity to get to know them, who they are, give their social media a follow and basically connect with any new clubs within the organization. And I think the last thing I would mention is for our very first this year's International Front Runners Day, we thought we, 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 we tried an initiative where, we, where the purpose was to show the diversity and the vast expansion of our network of clubs around the world. And we've done so by trying to encourage clubs as well as individual members to let us know on social media what being a front what being part of front runners means to them personally and highlight um, well highlight and capture the responses on our social media by sharing them on Facebook and and Instagram and just to conclude this report I'm not going to give out any names or anything or any specific people just to read you some of the fantastic well I'm only actually going to read three of the fantastic um, reviews that we got from some of our members from different clubs around the world. So one person wrote, joining Dublin Frontrunners has allowed me to build a long lasting relationships and a sustainable network of locals and friends all whilst being healthy and meeting in nature. Dublin Frontrunners um, run in Dublin, which is one of the most beautiful cities and parks in the world. Um, I love being a part of the community. Then another person wrote, having a, being part of international front runners is important to me for having a friendly gay space where I can just unwind and be myself. And then lastly, we've had a lovely, uh, slightly longer message from one of our allies actually. And, and they wrote, Having a lovely, uh, being part of front runners, oh, having a lovely and, uh, and welcoming space where I'm learning to run and runners. making new friends. Every week since um, since the beginning of the mm -hmm. year, I have shown up not exactly hiding the fact that I think running is rather horrible and it uh, mm -hmm. presents a significant challenge for me. And every week the community welcomed me with open arms and encouraged me to continue as a straight <coughs> ally to the community who is very insecure. I have many times questioned if I belong and if I'm worthy of these wonderful people, but they never hesitate to tell me that I belong. Thank you international front runners and the community for having such a positive effect on my mental health and self-confidence. And um, yeah, I think that concludes. Okay, thanks, thanks very much, Martin. <laughs> um, Buddy, do you have anything to say about the newsletter? Yeah, <clears throat> so first of all, I'd like to apologize that the newsletter didn't come out as early er, earlier than I expected. Um, I was recovering from COVID. And thank you so much for everyone who has contributed to the newsletter. Um, I would like to thank Richard Airface who in the past have been like say contributing and driving all these newsletters and I, I really miss that he helped uh, his help in um, collecting the newsletter. I would like to thank all of the committee members who have contributed with their portions at the newsletter and also uh, the featured frontrunners Jake Fedorowski um, who is also here today and also like uh, the regional representatives for contacting their member clubs and getting um, these the updates from each member club back to the newsletter. Um, so I can like, yeah, thank you so much. There was about a hundred plus clubs. It was a bit challenging to make sure that the final output is still reasonable.
probably small enough to be distributed um, via sure. internet. But yeah, yeah. thank you, Annan. Oh, um, I'm looking forward to like say um, oh, you just gotta doing the next, the the next newsletter yeah. in about six months time. I think like you know, for mm -hmm. Christmas or New Year, there'll be a lot of updates that That'll... we can um, you know like, come together again and produce something for you know like, immediate distribution and also for something to look back in the future when we can look back like in you know, like the what's been happening with the organization in the past every six months to see how we've um, been tracking. Thank you. Yeah, and the, the newsletter is performing an important function because we're not um, in person. When we used to have in-person meetings, the, the um, regional reps would give a report, which could itself be quite long. So what we're doing, we try to do here is shrink a day-long meeting into an hour. <laughs> we've failed. But um, we ha have to have the newsletter. So the regional reps providing com contributions from their clubs is uh, is vital uh, for everybody to um, be heard. And I think uh, Buddy did a fantastic job taking the raw product, which had lots of lots of different sized texts, fonts, photographs, all of that, and turning it into a, a great finished product um, that is about a third of the size or a quarter of the size of the one we had last year so um congratulations well done buddy thank you very much especially after recovering from COVID, which is uh, uh it's uh it's very difficult to rally when you've had um something like that so close to having to prepare the newsletter so thank you very much thank you it's not perfect and i wish i could do better next time thank you yeah there's all it can always be better <laughs> but it's got to get it's got to be published so yes thank you um, now, and Buddy and Alden have got, uh, we had a revision to the constitution that Jake has helped us with as well, helped us, came to the steering committee and we talked about um, making some changes to the language in the constitution. So I think Alden, were you going to talk to this or Buddy, who's going to take point? Yeah, uh, I'll just start just to introduce it, but you basically... Uh... Uh, mentioned a little bit, uh, some issues came up where we were looking at our constitution and we thought that uh, uh, there was a proposal to make some adjustments because of the sort of gender specific language in the constitution. And so we had asked for volunteers to look at that and um, see what they come up with uh, as what might be improvements to our, our constitution and mission statement. And so with that, um, uh, Jake and Booty, as I mentioned, uh, did work on that, and they pulled together a proposal, which uh, which I typed up, and we have posted it. It's out there. I hope people have had a chance to look at that. That uh, shows the existing language and some of the proposed changes, and so we'd like to um, look at that going forward and uh, have a formal vote, if we can, to approve uh, approve the language. Um, just before we get before we do that. Uh, they, a couple of um, late proposals came in over the last day uh, after people had a chance to look at the language and it mainly centers around the language in the mission statement at the start. And that language is then uh, referred to in many of the sections further, further on. So I think if we just look at that piece, um, we, can, we can see um, what we might wanna do on that. So the current mission statement has the, the language um, that the, um, the, the association promotes the sports of running, walking, and related athletic activities for gays, lesbians, bisexuals, and transgendered and their supporters. Um, so a couple of proposals have been in that to just leave that language with gays, lesbians, bisexuals, and transgenders, transgenders uh, people, and their allies. And I know that Booty and Jake brought up um, a, diff a different language inserting in there. Um, and we've adjusted it a little bit with the late, uh, late edition where it says uh, uh, supporting the activities for gender and sexually, sexuality diverse people, henceforth the community and their allies. So that's, those are the two proposals that are forward. And if, if Booty or Jake would like to speak to some of that or any of the other uh, folks here at the meeting, um, we can we can discuss what we think is appropriate, and then and then move forward. 
So go ahead, uh, why don't we start with Booty or Jake or and have other folks uh, raise their hand perhaps for Chris, you can call on. Maybe I can, I can like I'll, um, give a bit of background on how, how it all started. Like when we did like say club renewals, we asked members, member clubs to report on the, the, the breakdown of their club memberships and whether it was like say, like a men and women in the past because we want to encourage uh, participation of women. But um, we believe like uh, it, it represents a world view that is binary in nature where it's just like men and women in gender. Like we understand that like, you know, uh, genders are not binary. And we have here, like say, Jack talk about that um, after, after this, um, we want to make sure that I, um, our language is inclusive of non-binary people and uh, not just in the membership renewal form, but in all of our other documents as well. And then one of the documents that we also look at is the constitution, where if you look at um, many of the parts, it only mentions gay and lesbian, uh, or like say gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender. And we know that within our rainbow communities, it's uh, we, there are shades of rainbow that are not necessarily just gay, lesbian, bisexuals, and transgender. And we want to make sure that our organization remains inclusive to everyone who is in between or like say, not necessarily reflected by these names or words. Um, and that's how we started. And I would like to pass the microphone to Jake to share his, share their insights about yeah um of course okay. thank you booty um yeah so you know when when we're looking at you know specifically in in the existing uh, mission statement where it's talking about for gays lesbians bisexuals and transgenders that is outdated um and is only referring to specific identities within the lgbtqia plus spectrum um we're realizing that that spectrum is, is is a gigantic spectrum and it's very difficult to be creating acronyms or terms that are just calling out specific identities on that spectrum so there's a term going around or a phrase being used called gender and sexual diversity um, or more simply it's sexual diversity um, but the the acronym gsd for gender and sexual diversity is, is a more inclusive term that's referring to all the diversities, right? You've got sex characteristics under that umbrella, sexual orientations, gender identities. Um, by using the phrase gender and sexual diversity, you aren't having to call out specific identities. You're referring to the entire group as one umbrella um, you know, group. So that is where we have added into this proposed mission statement. Uh, I'm gonna send in an updated, uh, the updated phrasing here as, um, uh, to include the gender and sexually diverse um, people or, or community. Um, so that's kind of where our inspiration came for, for this updated mission statement. Um, and it is, it is our goal or is our objective here to be more inclusive um, and not have to call out specific identities and continue to update that acronym. Um, and it, you know, <laughs> it's also easier to say LGBTQIA plus uh, can can take a long time. If you just use GSD or gender and sexually diverse, it's it's a lot more succinct and uh, inclusive. Okay. Um, Alden, did you have any? Oh, Randy's got uh, something to say. Uh, I think the draft I saw actually had this, um, just had gender diverse and had sex and sexuality removed, but. Um, right, and that was the last change that I said came in earlier uh, today. So just to, uh, tweaking that a bit uh, to the language that they just mentioned. So that's one option, but yeah, there are there other comments? Go ahead. Randy, you wanna say something? Well, <clears throat> yes, I understand uh, what Booty and Jake have said about updating uh, the the idea of that there are more than one more than one gender. My uncomfortableness is around the word sex and sexuality, because I'm a longtime um, gay activist, and um, our opponents used to paint us as just sexual people, and um, so we fought a long time to get them to understand that we are more than just sexual people. 
Um, so I'm very uncomfortable with the word sex and sexuality in the Constitution. I think there may be a way to, to get the ideas across without using those two words, which are, in my mind, uh, words we want to stay away from uh, just because of our history uh, of, of, of fighting that idea that we're, we're only fighting for the right to have sex, uh, which is what our opponents uh, would often say to us um, and, and call us you know, sexual perverts and sexual deviants. So that word, those words to me are not, um, are, are, I, I think there's a better way to say it. And so that I would go along with something that would keep uh, th those uh, explosive words uh, out of the constitution. Jim, do you have something to say? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna 100% agree with Randy and um, speaking from a US perspective where we have uh, increasing tools being used to seek out various ways to divide us. And so I, I, I just want to emphasize, you know, agree with Randy that, that especially from a U.S. perspective where LGBT rights are likely to start getting under more pressure than getting more diverse, I think we, we, we do well to, to stay more, to re exactly as he mentioned, remove things like sex and sexuality, which can, are, it's basically, um, it's basically providing tools for folks that seek to divide and, and use, use our community for political purposes. I, I get where you're coming from, Jake, uh, but it seems that I, I, GSD is a new term for me and I'm not sure that it's in wide use at the moment. I think it's uh, developing. Um, so maybe if we can start with um, a, a brief that just deletes this, these words for the time being, and we can revisit it in the future if we have to. Would that be fair? Yeah, I would also just like to, to call attention to the fact that specifically as a non-binary person um, within the running community, I'm doing a lot of advocacy work. Um, we're seeing a lot of races creating divisions and there is this, this lack of differentiation between gender and, and sex, right? The sex assigned at birth. So we're seeing a lot of confusion between male, female, man, woman, and non-binary. Um, we're seeing male and female being used as genders uh, when in fact those are sexes that are being assigned at birth. And so by pairing non-binary with male and female, that's actually incorrect. Non-binary is a gender identity, not a sex. Um, and so the, so the intention behind in the inclusion of sex or, or sexually diverse in this is to kind of get the coverage of, of the male female and, and intersex and those identities. Um, so I think there, there's a lot of importance in, in including something that's you know speaking to the difference between sex and, and gender identity. Um, you know, I, I totally understand that you know these words have uh, have a past, have a history. You know, we we've seen that with with the word queer. Um, you know, there is a reclamation, you know, and kind of bringing that back into the vocabulary and kind of taking pride in that, in that usage. Um, so I think there's definitely a conversation to be had. Um, I just fear that by including gender diverse, we are excluding, um, you know, our intersex uh, friends and family members and, and those who are identified, you know, in different areas of uh, sexual identities. Okay, but I think it's, if anybody, so uh, Anthony, Anthony, you've got something to say? Yeah, um, I personally don't have a problem with uh, um, the proposed um, changes, but then I live in a more tolerant country than the United States. Um, but however, I wonder if a compromise might be to, given we talk often about the rainbow community, that why don't we just say related athletics activities for the rainbow community and their allies, and that covers everybody off and um, and avoid some of the other issues that others have raised. But, you know, we talk about a rainbow, so why don't we just say we're for the rainbow community and their allies? And um, thereafter, the kids for the community. And well, I think um, the rainbow community is also something that might not be in wide use outside of our region either, Anthony. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I get it a lot here, but I'm not sure that um, it's it means very much uh, in the US and in, you, 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 uh, in Europe. Um, so I know where you're going with that, but could we perhaps just agree that we'll just take these this wording out for the time being? 
And the other thing that uh, was put forward, because we've got a difference here. So in one part, we're saying gays, lesbians, bisexuals and transgenders, which implies that it's a bit like calling women uh, females and men males. So this is the denies the, the like calling the person an adjective. So what I would I think we have here is um, we say gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender people, because that's what we've got down here, people. So if we just put that wording in so that we can have the same terminology between the, the mission statements. Oh, yes, we've got it there. Gender, no, no. Gays, lesbians, and oh, so gen and sexually diverse. Oh, okay, so we just want to take out that. Sorry. Sex and sexuality then. We have fixed the people bit. Beg your pardon. Can I say yeah, something? It's really good. Oh, no. <laughs> um, hiya, um, Eleka wants to say something, if that's mm. all right. Yeah, could I say something? Because I, it's, it's, yeah, I'm also personally very interested in this topic. And um, I was just thinking, because I, I get the ideas or, or the, the arguments for both sides, right? With the history of the word sex and, and sexuality and, and the sort of biological and, and the confusion between sex and gender. But um, to still keep including the intersex community, could we? So I don't know, and this is something, a question for the US people, right? Is the word intersex less sort of uh, sensitive than using the word sex and sexuality? Because then what you could do maybe, instead of taking those, uh, those two words completely out, uh, can you maybe say intersex and gender non-conforming people as a way of keeping both at least somewhat included. I know it still doesn't cover the whole community, but at least a larger part of taking those two completely out. Would that be an alternative? The science. <laughs> uh, Matcha? Mm -hmm. um, as I'm working, um, excuse me. Okay, yeah. as I'm working around human rights uh, uh, framework and also in the in the nationally uh, human rights engagement, we are promoting the word uh, people with diversity in refer to the concept to covering all diversity included gender identity, which allow us uh, to talking about gender identity that matter. Also, we're talking about sexual orientation that referring uh, different orientation as well as expressions as uh, uh, included also sex characteristics. Uh, in in short, uh, we name as uh, people with they were soji when we're talking about framework, but we also always highlight LGBTIQ and plus uh, because a lot of matter around that area. So it depends on the context, what we talking about. Sometimes we're talking about identity, we use that word, but sometimes we're talking about concept that inclusive for everyone. Uh, we use the term so geeks. Thank you. Uh, Gilbert? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of go, I know we had a couple people who had said they were uncomfortable with having sex and sexuality, but I will actually want to support having sex and sexuality in there because like, I think that the way it's being brought up against having it in there is not what the words mean. And I feel like it is a part of our community that we're completely blocking out and we're trying to update and promote this as like more of who we represent and it doesn't make sense to update it to represent more people but not represent everybody and i think by having gender sex and sexuality diverse people covers everybody in our community and we don't have to come back next year and be like okay actually you know what now it does now we do feel comfortable having these words in there let's update it again like sex and sexuality are, they're not bad things. Um, they are definitely more progressive by covering everybody in our community. And I, I know within our club, um, we have a, um, a trans and, and um, non-binary committee of about 30, we have about 30 members in our club that um, identify as, as non-binary and probably about another 20 who are transgender. So I think that like, just having that in there is representing everybody and we're not kicking anybody out of this circle that we have. Um, it's a representation of everybody. I think that the work that 
Udi and Jake have done, especially with the knowledge that they have um, within the work is like, I am fully supportive of keeping sex and sexuality in there. I do actually agree with that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. So, so just a question with that, the, the latest that uh, Rudy and Jake, I believe it said was having it, having it say activities for gender and sexual diversity uh, people, that is henceforth, yeah. help, henceforth the community and their allies. I was just wondering is, um, does, does that um, leave us with a compromise at this point or is that still, um, uh, do we still see issues with that? So just not having the word sex, but using uh, sexual diversity. Yeah, but that, that does exclude the group, right? Because of the difference between sex and gender. Um, so, yeah. Correct. So when, when you use sexually diverse, that is meant to include um, you know, sex, sex characteristics, as well as sexual orientation. So it is, is a, it is a more umbrella term than specifically calling out sex and sexuality. Um, that, that's where that sexual um, term is coming from or the, the, the uh, impetus for that word. Okay, so are we back to Jim? Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm comfortable with that compromise and uh, notwithstanding my comments earlier. And I, I just, but two other points, one is, this is about the, not a lot of folks will read this. I think this conversation is really important for what we actually put directly in front of prospective members and others curious about who the organization is on the website and all that. So there's sort of like a, an overall um, communications um, messaging plan that could go behind this. And then, and then building that, you would say, to what extent are we concerned about pushing forward versus um, as I sort of suggested earlier, avoiding being used politically, which is a rare, honestly, it's, not, it's kind of a, a rare, uh, uh, sort of a low risk, but still it's just a concern that we have in the United States right now. And you can make that decision. So I think this compromise is fine. Oh, and one last thing is uh, there is a lot of what you could call brand equity in LGBT. Just when you think of when you step back and you think about all of the investment that went into creating LGBT as as a as something that people understand and have been trained to support reflexively. So there is a hazard to walking away from something that has so much brand identity, notwithstanding its lack of inclusivity. It's just, and I don't know how to solve that. I just, I mean, we've got three, four decades of people pushing that 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 marker. And they've been very successful in creating it as a dignified, powerful symbol. So we should be careful about how we can bridge those things and try to capture some of that brand value. Yep, that's a good point, I think. Okay, so the change we're going to make then, Randy, do you want to speak to whether is GSD acceptable? I, I only have one comment and I'll, then I'll be quiet. Um, I think my perspective comes from, as I said before, my history of being a gay activist for many, many decades. Um, and that that history that that we do not want to give our opponents any reason to um, to reduce us to sexual beings. So I personally uh, do not favor having that word at all in the Constitution. I recognize I may be old school. But um, that's my experience, and I think the um, uh, you know if you don't have that experience, then th that word doesn't have that explosion for you. So um, uh, you know I, I don't know if we want to solve this here or table it with, for the, with a larger discussion uh, of a more people. But um, uh, I I I think to me it's uh, it's not it, it may be cutting edge. Uh, and maybe I need to learn about that, but I don't. I don't know if that's the right way for us to go. That's what, all I have to say. Okay, so um, we can we can vote on it. Uh, we can vote to send it back to committee. What do we want to do? Should we? What do you think, Eldon? I was I was wondering if we want to propose the changed language 
with just the gender and sexual diversity people, I don't know if that's awkward language, henceforth the, the community and their allies to have sort of that change in there because we refer to the community in the other sections of a proposed change, which takes out some of the gender specific pronouns and things. And it would be nice to have some of that um, passed with this. And even if we send this, the mission statement back to maybe another round for the discussion, if we wanna tweak just the mission statement uh, down the road. I'm just wondering if that's a reasonable um, way to approach this. Well, how about we vote on the amendment with GSD and then if we want to have another crack at the uh, mission statement, we can do that in steering committee when we come back. Okay, but to be clear, is it the, the latest version that uh, Booty and Jake proposed without the word sex in it and so forth? So it's, 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 it becomes like say gender and sexually. So sex and sexuality becomes sexually. Um, sexually diverse people. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. uh, Jake's put it in the chat there, gender and sexually diverse. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> so Chris, who is moving this motion? Is it, is it the steering yeah. committee? Sorry? You Is broke the up steering there. committee moving this motion? Well, it's it's been proposed and before the before the AGM, so there's no yeah. motion yet. But this is a proposal put forward, right. right? I mean, yeah. But it's by the steering committee. Well, no. Um, no. So it, it's it's well, it was put on the agenda because the steering committee had a subcommittee that had this proposal. It would so. Right. If you, can I can I support it? Then I'll support it. Um, yeah. And can I have a seconder? Uh, I'll second Jim from Colorado. From Thanks, Jim. So we can um, we can have a vote now. I have a poll for it. I'm not sure if I start this poll whether it, I I've only got the other things, which is the officers' elections. So if I can if I can't do um, <laughs> if I can't break it out. Are we okay? Are we okay to vote then, Alden? Do you want to? I think I think we're okay unless there's further can, comment. Can you say something? Yes. Thank you. Yes. This is uh, Tommy from Copenhagen Front Runners. I think this is an, a very very important topic in our own group in Copenhagen. We discussed a lot about uh, identity and gender uh, this whole uh, year, and I, if, from my point of view, we are not we are not able to vote today. We have something which is so important. But let's take it another round. Uh, let's, uh, I think the two guys who already uh, came up with a, a proposal, maybe they, one or two persons would like to add to that group and they could come up with another thing because I'm afraid that we, we elect something today which we are not satisfied about and then we have to go through it again in a year from now. It's very, very important. I, I, I wouldn't vote rather well, we will have to go, if, if we don't vote today, we will have to go through it again another year's time, but we'll have the same constitution we've had for 15 years, the same language. So we could still revisit it, Thomas. Yeah. Okay. And so, so nothing's set in stone. You can always, we can always do it again. We can always check on it again. But I'm just, I think what um, Alden was making there is that it's been out of date for quite some time. So it'd be better to make this update and then make another patch than to continue on with the existing one because perfect is the enemy of good. We'll never get to perfect <laughs> and we'll never get complete agreement amongst 60 or 100 people in one of these meetings either. So at some point in time, some people are going to be disappointed. I understand what you're saying. Uh, Mike, Mike Watkins has just chimed in. Uh, hi, I'm uh, more than prepared to vote in favor of uh, any revision because it certainly does need to be revised. I don't know if we need a friendly amendment that perhaps a consultation is sent out as part of this so that every club can provide some feedback uh, leading into next year's meeting if we need it. Thank you. So is a constitutional change only possible at the AGM, Alden? Yes. For a special general no. meeting. Yeah, just it can be called uh, with a special general meaning just provided we have the proper notice, right? 
All right. So we can we don't have to wait to the AGM to make a change later on. If uh, right. if Thomas and Buddy and uh, Jake decide that they want to present another proposal, then they can do that, and we can have a special general meeting just about that. Right. So um, I, I move that we vote today on this change that we've just discussed with the GSD in, in it. And do I have, uh, and uh, uh, who was my seconder a minute ago, Jim? Was it? Yeah, yeah you're still so, happy? Right. Yep. Okay. Let's... So I think I've just started a poll. Uh, yes, I see it. Uh -huh. Got all the questions. Yes, it's got all the questions. Sorry about that. I should have done a yeah. couple of polls. <laughs> are, are we in trouble if, <clears throat> if we vote for only for the one? Will it nullify your poll? No, it won't. Um, you can, well, actually, why don't we just proceed on <laughs> while you've got it up there? Uh, so is, is there any objection to bringing forward the election of officers um, nope. item? No, so no, each, no. Year we, each year we have to uh, elect the officers that continue on. Um, so the office, officers as president, uh, treasurer, secretary, uh, webmaster and communications officer. So they're all in there as well. Um, I don't have anybody who's resigned and nobody has expressed any interest in standing for these positions unless there's any objection. All of the people who are currently in those positions and thank you, thank you everybody, have all said that they are happy to stand again. So if you'd like to vote for the officers who currently represent you, um, then please go ahead. So that's uh, Alan, Alain Gavremont is the secretary. Um, Alden, of course, is the treasurer. And you, Brad is the webmaster, another thankless, luckless, hopeless job. He's beavering away there all the time and constantly updating things that we break. Um, but uh, he's said he'll want, he, he will continue as well. And Martin is the um, current um, I haven't got that question in the poll. So Martin is the current uh, communications officer, but Buddy and he kind of a team. Um, so, um, Chris, uh, for item number one, right now on the screen, we can see the agenda items number six to 14. Are you able to show us again the change that you're referencing for question number one? Yeah, I'll see if I can. Uh, so I don't actually have the marked up the, the marked up version. I can only show you the. Uh, the it, it was in the chat just for that yeah. one yeah. little section. Yeah. Oh, I see what I've done. Oh, so in the chat, it said uh, gender and sexually diverse. So that's just adding that. Uh, yes, yeah, so where it says sex and sexuality, we were going to have gender and sexually diverse people. So people. just replace oh. sex and sexuality with sexual, sexually diverse people. And the rest still holds henceforth the community and their allies. Mm. I'm keeping that language. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did, did everyone get that? I've voted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, Come on, it's it's Thursday here. <laughs> Poor old New Zealand. Uh -oh. I think it's Friday in New Zealand. <laughs> oh, it's so eighty nine percent of participants in this meeting have voted. Uh, so I think that we've we've probably got a fairly uh, conclusive vote for that. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know if you see the results, but it's um it's twenty seven to thirty one, um twenty uh, sorry twenty eight thirty two. So, th so obviously some people are about to vote. So twenty eight people have voted yes, and four people have voted no. Uh, so everybody's voted on something. <laughs> uh, okay, right. So all the, everybody who could answer has answered all of the questions. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for voting. I'm going to end the poll here.
Did anybody not vote? Anybody needs to? Mike, you've got your hand up. Maybe Mike just accidentally touched, tapped his hand. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, so that amendment stands and uh, congratulations and commiserations, all the officers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. I'm not sure what you're seeing, but I'm apparently sharing the results of the poll. All right. Let me get out of here. So I'll stop sharing that. Okay. Are you are you now seeing the amendment screen again? Yes. Okay. I'll get rid of that, and we'll return to our usual agenda. Um, so. Gay Games. Do we have the Gay Games Committee from Hong Kong online? Alex uh, was on. He oh. was here, yeah. Um, I think the best man to go to would be Mark Thompson. Mark, you, you want to speak up for the uh, Gay Games Hong Kong? If there's any update. Uh, hi, Mark. And I... I I have nothing prepared and I, I wasn't aware that uh, there was going to be a presentation. So, and, and I'm not actually on the committee, but they, about two weeks ago, they had a um, coffee chat update. And uh, if you give me a few minutes, I can find a link to that. It was recorded and I can put that in the chat for people. I think that would be great too. And in the interest of time, it would probably be better for us to have a look at that outside, if that's all right, okay. Mark. And on but, behalf of IFR, I attended. And so we're full steam ahead for next year. Yeah. Yes, correct. Okay. So if everyone could have. Thanks for that. Okay, so we'll review, the, oh, there it is now. So we can all have a look at that and it'll be in the minutes as well. All right, um, Wayne, five minutes, please, no more. You've got to be kidding, I've got a long. <laughs> all right, three minutes. <laughs> I've got my stopwatch now. All right, uh, so you all know that Xander resigned and uh, Xander was the, my, Co-partner, we get two delegates to the Federation. And Xander was from New York City front runners. He was also in, I believe, San Francisco front runners. Um, him and Richard are partners and they've moved to Hawaii. So they're probably now going to be in Honolulu front runners. Uh, Xander works for American Airlines and gets loads of free travel. And uh, we've been attending the meetings. I'm in Sydney. It costs me a lot of money to get to the meetings, and that's why. Um, there's been money spent on Federation um, delegates to attend. We haven't missed a meeting for many, many, many years. Um, and um, the meeting this year is in November, right at the beginning of November. Uh, it's in Guadalajara. Uh, at this stage, I am the only delegate because of Xander's resignation. And we have put an advert up in, um, in our Facebook page. Hopefully, Martin, you can cover it with, um, what's, that other, what's the other thing? We're in Twitter. And um, Instagram. And Instagram. Um, if we, we've actually, I have received one serious uh, candidature. Um, uh, and when we get enough uh, people interested or not enough people interested, I'll be having an online meeting with those people to tell them all the dirt about the job and what's expected. Um, because um, yeah, money is a serious issue in becoming a federation delegate. Um, now, let's get on. Guadalajara. They've uh, signed the official documentation, but sadly, we've received zero information. There is no front runner club in, in Guadalajara. Um, hopefully, that will change, and um, hopefully, things will start Zooming because it's only about 14 months away, 15 months away. Hong Kong, on the other hand, have had lots of activity. I attend numerous meetings with Hong Kong. 
Um, they're having a big activity for World Pride and a few other events around the world. Um, they seem to have lots of money. They're expecting 7,000 to attend the, uh, their games. Um, and just you don't know, the games are being held at exactly the same time in both places. Now, which leads us to lots of other problems, particularly for IFR. We usually have a social event at each games, uh, and we usually have a fun event at uh, the track and field. And the third thing we have is normally our AGM at the gay games. So we can all meet in real. We don't know what's going to happen with the, with the two events. We know for a fact that Hong Kong is focusing on Asia, people in Asia and people in Australia to attend. Um, and as I said, we've had no communication at all with Guadalajara, so we're not sure what's going on there. But I, I am assuming that Guadalajara is going to really start bumping up communications. Um, Hong Kong will have registrations open in a few months and they are, uh, well, because they were the, uh, the original uh, host city, they are a long way ahead. Uh, the next uh, federation meeting I told you was in Guadalajara in November. Um, if anybody wants to donate me thousands and thousands, or actually millions of uh, frequent flyer points or uh, money, whatever, let me know. Um, it's uh, at the moment, it's extremely expensive to be traveling overseas. Uh, I don't think you'll get a redemption seat anyway, Wayne. So. Uh... <laughs> Yes, I don't think so. The other things that uh, we look after in the as Federation delegates is the International Rainbow Memorial Run. That is an event held by former host cities. And as we zoom up, we've now got, this is our 11th Games, and we will now have 12 hosts because of the duplication uh, for next year. Uh, they will, those runs will start in roughly December. I think San Francisco was on here. I saw them. Um, San Francisco usually kicks it off, usually around December or January. Um, and then it's coming here to World Pride because Sydney is a former host city. And we're having a, a we're going to be doing it twice, once for World Pride and once for Mardi Gras, because uh, the events are basically uh, next door to each other. But we culminate normally in one city. So we don't know what's happening for the rainbow flag run, where it will finish, whether it will finish in Guadalajara or whether it will finish in Hong Kong. And it's normally held on the morning of the opening ceremony. The, this comes under culture and culture have not made a decision yet. I'm heavily involved with discussions. I just want them to make a decision. Uh, and we will then sort it out. The reason I'm telling you this is because uh, Alden had it in his treasures report, there's 750 US dollars waiting to be spent and been approved for Hong Kong front runners to help with the rainbow flag run event in Hong Kong. So okay. well, in Hong Kong, we can use that money there. So the next AGM will be from one of those places and you'll just have to, the, the steering committee will just have to keep it, our eye on it and make sure that we've got people attending in both. Hopefully, yes, yeah. Um, some, some, one of them is going to be virtual at least. So we're get, still going to, yeah. you're, still, you're still going to have a perhaps bigger gathering at, in one of them, um, but uh, there's going to be either gatherings at both in phys physical gatherings of both, but there's still going to be a virtual component from the sun. Uh, the, it's still going to be the, timing, the time of the day is going to be a great, a significant. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the other option is we could also hold a separate virtual an annual meeting uh, at a later date because there is an issue with yes, both yeah. of those being that might be, so that, late. In fact, yeah, that's, that might be a, a better solution, but let, it, we're yeah, just, we can, we can, we I'm can just talk foreshadowing about what, what the problems yeah. we're facing in the next year. Yeah. Um, I am just conscious of the time, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Scholarships. Um, we hopefully will be doing scholarships because of the two venues. It's all askew. We don't know what's going on. But hopefully um, 
what we normally do is ask clubs to contribute um, what you can. What quite a few clubs do is just put like a bucket out or a hat out at a number of uh, their runs or their get-togethers and that money goes towards international front runners having our own scholarship people attending the gay games. Uh, so keep that in mind. We had our IFR day. Um, it was great to see the participation. It was our very first attempt. Thank you very much. Um, and we got some really wonderful reports. I'm hoping that it will be even much, much, much bigger next year. Great. Federation delegates signing off. Thank you. Well done. And only seven minutes. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll just get back to regional reps briefly, but uh, we just have a couple of positions vacant, as I said at the top of the hour. Um, so we will need to hold an election in those areas. Uh, Canada is one. So uh, we've had uh, Sam Sanders and Emma Bug retire. So Emma's from Canada. So I think Alan has said that he is willing to take on the duties and of that as well. Um, so we'll probably have to organise a meeting uh, with the Canadian clubs just to go through and get that ratified. But the regional reps are ratified by their own clubs, not by us. So that's right. done at a local and, level. Right. But that can be done here if there is the Canadian clubs want to vote on Alan proposal oh. or put anyone else forward. So we can just okay. handle it quickly here. So we've got um, Maya from uh, Ottawa. Who else have we got? Vancouver and Toronto, I believe. Okay. okay. And Calgary, uh, Alberta. Oh, Calgary. Hi. <laughs> and Toronto's, Toronto's gone. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, do you want to uh, vote on Alan as a rep? There's only two. Well, Cal Vancouver, Cal Cal Calgary, it. Vancouver, and Ottawa. A three, yeah. Um, that's pretty representative. I mean, it can be done if, uh, if they don't object. Maya? No objection here. Okay. Of course not, Maya. <laughs> <laughs> and Calgary? Just remind me, Alan, where you're from. Ottawa. Ottawa, yep. Approved. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, somebody from the West. <laughs> they know politics. <laughs> you don't they don't look at any politics yeah <laughs> okay so it's it's a yes from gene all right so thank you everyone um and, and congratulations alan uh and uh i'm sure everyone looks forward to your next uh regional zoom rep meeting and so we've also got um sam sanders has retired and she's actually sent through a bio of the person um that she's found to take over the position, but uh, I, I will follow up with them to organize a meeting um, with their region to uh, get that approved locally and then bring it back to us for ratification. And then as Wayne said, we've also got Xander's position, but he's, as he's indicated, advertised about that. So please look at the Facebook. And um, if you know anybody who might be interested in spending an awful lot of money and an awful lot of time and being up at three o'clock in the morning for conference calls. We need a non-male. We need, yes, we need non-males. That's right. We need to Im improve our diversity. That would be nice. Mm. Okay, last item then before other business, Brooks Grants, Alden. Okay, were there any other regional ones that you want to cover? Um, in terms of, I think... Galley? Uh, or <laughs> uh, Gal Galley and I, we've got to organize a meeting to because uh, he was um, appointed last year, but we haven't right, had so an, we, we haven't had an election with the region yet, so we still have to do that. So right, I'll follow up. Right. Galley still on? I think he might have gone. Okay. Um, but I've, I've oh there he is <laughs> yes. So. Gally and I have already made a plan to follow up after this and have a an, um, uh, first Zoom call with his region so that he can introduce himself and see if, you know, have an election okay. for that. Yeah, so the other ones, are, yeah, just cover that and we'll 
I've got the update back to us. Okay, I can move on to the Brooks, Brooks Grant. Grant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I was just gonna give a, um, a brief overview, which I alluded to before, uh, just so that folks know prior to 2021, Brooks was giving out grants individually to some clubs who applied to them directly. And that had been uh, roughly 25,000 25, was given out in $5,000 blocks uh, previously. In 1920, uh, 2021, uh, we received 20,000 from Brooks Sports to grant to our clubs. And that was distributed to 27 clubs who, uh, who had not previously received grants from Brooks and based on the proposals that they submitted to the IFR committee. And uh, so that was, was pretty successful. We got a lot of positive feedback from that. And in uh, 2022, we received $23,002 from Brook Sports. And those grants went out to 28 different clubs. And in addition to that, uh, Brooks had distributed pride kits to a number of clubs directly, uh, giving them materials and shirts and so forth. So it's been a productive relationship and they've express, expressed um, the desire to continue with that. So we will be looking forward to that. Um, along with that, just to, just to note, we are looking to have someone help out with that process uh, um, to be a contact with Brooks and help with the, with the grant process. So that's a, a item out there. Um, so that was basically the, the summary for, from grants. I don't know if there's questions about that or if you wanted to handle anything more with that, Chris. No, unless there's any questions. I think we're all uh, familiar with the, the great um, benefits we've had from the Brooks partnership and hopefully they continue. Um, so I'll go to chat. It would be good if um, we had a follow up in our communications or Facebook or whatever of what those clubs have done with the Brooks money. Yes. Yeah. And we... Yeah, we have received a little bit of feedback, but we should probably solicit that and uh, pull that together. Yeah. Okay, we'll take that as an action. Does any, anybody else have any questions or comments about the Brooks partnership? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Brent Radicke, president of San Francisco Frontrunners. Um, I, I think that my, my comment, it's not a question, but my comment for um, future years would be that, you know, I, it wasn't when we, when the communication was sent out about the Brooks grants and for, and the request for clubs to request funds, it wasn't very, um, there wasn't a lot of guidance in terms of how much was available, how much funding was available, how much how much clubs could apply for, um, what kind of the scope of the grant was. So I think that in the future, it would be helpful to, to give some, provide some more context to the clubs, because I know that we put together a pretty substantial um, uh, request that then we were told, oh, that's a lot of money. But I think you know that's really something that that should be done by the funder as opposed to like having the the grantees um, go through the process of like putting together a proposal and then not and then you know it's just it it, it causes a waste of time for everybody. So I think better better communication and and like maybe even a an RFP um, for that 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 establishes what the maximum could be for um, a request, what, what they are actually interested in, and then clear guideline or clear um, transparency on how the, the, the fundies are selected, um, what the, you know, how are, how are people being evaluated? How are, how are these funds being attributed? Because it's not clear whether or not it's like a special selection committee, if Brooks is involved, if it's the steering committee making the decision, I think that um, it just, I, this is new for the, for IFR. So I would just recommend um, best practices would be to communicate that information and um, to just be more transparent. Yep, that's, that's a good point. And, and as you said, it was new and that is something that the, 
uh, IFR was working working through itself, trying to sort that that out and get a handle on all of that. So, but it's a good point. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, go oh. for it, buddy. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> Hi, um, Brent, like, you know, um, to respond to your, like, uh, concern, like, and, like, um, Richard was working on it, and then, um, like, the committee wasn't sure how many clubs were going to apply for the Brooks funding. We have about 105 clubs, but then we, we don't really know how many out, out of this 105 are actually going to go ahead and ask. We do know, like, that we, we got a certain number of money from Brooks, but then we want to distribute that money as evenly as possible throughout like the membership base but then you know like um that's why like you know when we when international partners ended up receiving 20 something applications they would want to approve as many clubs as possible but then that means a lot of uh, the money needs to be like you know the money that goes to each club will have to go like uh, even lower and lower so like you know it wasn't that like you know they didn't know how much like, you know, like, um, to give, yes, they, they only got, like I said, the pool, but then like they have the aim of spreading it to as many clubs as evenly as possible. Um, and then depending on how many people, how many clubs out of 105 applies, that would de determine how, how much would be allocated to each club. So like, you know, I understand the frustration, like, you know, not knowing ahead if you were in our position of like, say, the steering committee, like, you know, we didn't also know like how many of 105 clubs are actually going to go ahead and apply? So that's... I, I, yeah, I think um, I think maybe some we can t talk about the mechanics of it later on, but yeah. um, it could be something like uh, if we know what the amount is going to be, um, then you could divide it into like a small, medium, and large prize, and there's a very small number of large prizes and a large number of small prizes or something like that. But let's take this um, under advisement for later. Uh, I think Brent's, to be Brent's honest, made a good point. I, to be honest, I think Richard did put that in the paper, roughly how much was available. Yes, but I think his metric was to evenly divide it. Well, so, the, uh, the regions, yes. Yes, yeah, so Brent's saying that maybe there are some worthy projects that couldn't be done that if we had have looked at the way we do the division, like what the divisions are, so let's talk about that and come up with a, a, a better process for the next time. Yeah, and I, I, I should say, like, I, I, I do fundraising for a living. I'm a chief development officer um, at a large performing arts organization. So I can, you know, if, if you'd like my, I don't know, I, I could offer some help or, or something. But We're I, always glad to get help. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, but, if you if you'd like to participate, I think Alden yeah. was already called for volunteers. So, if you'd like to help, please uh, let us know. I'd be happy to. I think I do remember the communication, and I really, I really felt like it lacked um, any like real, real parameters for which to apply. And so, it it um, I yeah. I just I I hope that we can really we can have a better system for the future uh, for, for clubs, for, you know, uh, for everyone, not just, not just, not just San Francisco farm runners, but for like, just so everyone understands like, Hey, you know, I have this really ambitious project. Is this something that could match up to it? And um, yeah. I, and, and, you know, again, a full, full, full grace for, for it being the first time and not knowing how many people would apply. Um, I just, uh, uh, happy to help think about how to um, make that a little more um, seamless. Doing it again, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. And we'll, we'll be in touch then, Brent. And um, obviously you may be going to form a fundraising committee and uh, take this on a fundraising subcommittee. Uh, so there's any other, any other business? I've got a quick one. Uh, this one might be more for uh, Leah from Paris, um, but uh, Booty uh, communicated uh, quite a while ago now about the Paris 2024 Olympics. 
and the open marathon. And um, because of Booty, I was able to enter the contest to get into that open marathon and ended up uh, winning an entry. So excited to be participating in the Paris 2024 Olympics. And so it's, you know, it's a couple of years away still, but uh, something to put on our radar, whether we wanted to put anything uh, or do anything associated with the Olympics in Paris uh, in the summer of 2024. And thanks to Booty for that. Okay. Well done. Good luck. Thank you. And by the way, uh, the nice thing is too, is uh, some people might not want to be on vacation after doing a marathon. So they also created the opportunity to flip from marathon to a 10 K race. So I selected the 10 K race. So uh, still uh, looking forward to it. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, no other business. Next so, AGM. Next AGM. When should we say? Is it going to be before the Gay Games or after the Gay Games? When does it have to be, Alden? It can it can be any time next year. Basically, how we, historically we've done this is a, when the club applied to host, the, they picked a good time that was uh, appropriate for their city and based on their seasons and so forth and uh, other events going on. Um, my only concern, normally we had it in the range of uh, mid-year uh, kind of time frame. Uh, my only concern with this one, with the, the games being so late in the year, I don't know if that's uh, appropriate, which is why I suggested potential of having a, with the two sites, potentially having a, a, a um, you know, a, a virtual meeting. To, to, to cover us because if we're having people going to both up, games. <laughs> but, yeah. It fixes two problems up for me. <laughs> I yeah. think uh, I think in the past, yeah, we've usually done it because in the Northern Hemisphere, that's when the events are on. So if people want to go to a large marathon or a race or something like that, then you usually end up in in the event city for that. Uh, you've usually got a running mm -hmm. event that people can center around. And right. if so, Euro Games is on where at city? Uh, Bern, Bern in Switzerland. Do you think Euro Games might <laughs> might well, be the logical choice? There's going to be so, lots of travel. Potentially. <laughs> potentially. So, so let's look at that and potentially have the next meeting around this time again next year, rather than try and complicate the gay games, which are now split apart anyway. Would have been a hybrid meeting in, in, in any case. Let's see if we have another virtual um, hybrid with uh, Bern. Uh, and if not, see if there's somebody else that wants to stump up for being the, the host. One of the clubs that are online right now might volunteer yep. to either do it might. next year or the year yeah. after. Right. They might like to host. So we could yep. we could entertain that as well. It would so, it would be nice if we if things were uh, stable enough that we could get a larger in-person gathering. Hmm. Hawaii. We're all staying in Richard <laughs> at Andrew's place. <laughs> um, yep. Okay, so around this time next year, and if we're looking for suggestions if anyone wants to host, otherwise we'll try and land on Bern again. Just confirming, like next like Sydney World Pride 2023, is that too soon to have too early. a gym? Too early. Yeah, right. We've, it's it's uh, it's not 12 months after this, so it's it's not really annual. Then you're having a six monthly meeting. <laughs> so let's let's reconvene it around this time next year. Okay. Do, There's nothing do we, else. Do, hmm? do do we know the dates for the Euro Games in Bern? Oh, let's have a look. Oh, probably there should be. It. Yeah. yeah, I didn't look yet. Twenty sixth to the twenty ninth of July, I believe. Yeah. Say that again. Twenty sixth to the twenty ninth of July. Thank you. Getting ready. Yeah. <laughs> 26 to 29 of July. So let's aim for that. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Okay. And thank you in the room over there. Enjoy the game, the rest of the games. And for thank everybody you. else, enjoy the rest Good luck of your with day. The games. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. you, Vista. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Bye. 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 Bye from Vancouver.
Cheers. Thank you.